What's going on everybody? It's your boy Kilo Loco and we're here to talk about some KVC up in here. Some KVC. That's key value coding for your punk. Oh yeah, so um today we're gonna be talking about KVC, which is key value coding. It's not something that's done, you know too much in Swift because it's not exactly a very Swifty thing to do and actually you have to use Objective-C runtime to do it. So it's not the Swiftiest thing to do and then people have implemented you know their own form of KVC but today we're just going to talk about KVC as implemented by Apple and how you can use it um, doing things um, you know with Swift. Now KVC is used by a lot of different things like core data and um, a couple of other uh, different you know things that that we use on a on a daily, which I can't think of right now. But uh, anyways, we do use key uh, key, uh, key value coding, and essentially what it is is it's a way for you to interact with the properties on a object, and access them like like dictionary. So you you access the key of the of the object, the property by its name. You know, in this case, we have a a object called user and we would access name by its key which is just the word name but we would access it as a string so I'm gonna show you guys how we're gonna do that um, how we can do that there's a couple other tutorials that I'm gonna be talking about um, and using KVC uh, which is why I'm bringing it up today so in the future we're gonna be using this um, here and there because it's something that you're gonna run into a lot using anything like UI kit so, uh, and you actually don't even need UI kit right here. We could just get on with foundation. Um, so yeah, let's just go ahead and jump right in. Anyways, as you can see right here, we have your basic user class and it does have to be a class. Once again, you have to use the Objective-C runtime. So Objective-C doesn't have uh, Swift structs. So we do have to use a class and this class is called user and it has three properties on it. Uh, name, just being a string, age zero, and then nicks, nicknames. It's an array of strings, big, sexy, and papi chulo, right? Um, and we're just gonna set each of these values just so that we don't have to deal with ugly initializers. Anyway, uh, what we wanna do in order to make an object key value codable, we essentially have to make sure that it conforms to a in what's called an informal protocol. And that protocol is called NS key value coding. Now this protocol you can't access directly, so you have to access it through NS object. And that's why it's called a um, uh, improper protocol because you can't access it directly. Anyways, what we want to do is we want to make sure that our object is a subclass of NS object because NS object does conform to the NS key value coding protocol. Now, uh, we also have to do a couple of things that are going to make your Swift code look a little bit ugly, but what we have to do is we have to make sure that all the properties that we are going to be coding uh, um, are on the Objective-C runtime. So let's go ahead and make them all conform to the Objective-C runtime. All right, so now our code's looking super ugly, but it's opening up a lot of doors for us so that we can start doing some pretty cool things. Now, as I said, by default, um, NS object does conform to that NS key value coding protocol. And then when we expose the properties to Objective-C, it automatically grants us the ability to access them through key value coding. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just create a user, I'm gonna assign it its name, uh, assign a name to it like normal, and then we'll just go ahead and see what the results are. All right, so as you can see, we created a user object right here, and then we access the user.name property, and we set it to Kyle. So as you would expect when we print it out, it's just gonna be Kyle, right? So this is what we normally do in Swift, right? But, if we wanted to do key value coding, we would do something different. So what we would do is we would actually set the name property through a function and we can use strings only in order to set that value. So let's go ahead and do that right now. All right, so as you can see, we call the function called set value and then you pass in whatever value and then for key, and the key is going to be the property called name. And as you can see, we used um, we used a string right here. So 
if you wanted to make something dynamic, like you didn't know which property you were going to be setting at runtime, like you're going to let the logic kind of decide that, then you would be able to pass in the, the string name right here and you'd be able to set that, that property dynamically without even knowing that you had to set it. So that's one of the benefits of doing key value coding. Now, working with strings, you know, especially when it's very reliant that you do spell the, the, the property right, because if you misspell it, go ahead and uh, misspell it as nam and you run this, what we do is we actually run into an error and it crashes your code. So if you misspell this key right here, it's gonna cause a huge problem. And uh, if you were to do this in Playgrounds, it would actually crash your Playgrounds to the point to where uh, you would have to, I think you have to quit Xcode, which I'm gonna do right now. Um, you have to quit Xcode and then open it all the way back up. And that would obviously happen in your app as well. All right, so I had to pull Xcode back up because it did crash permanently. Um, anyways, just make sure that you're not spelling, um, you're not misspelling your key incorrectly or else it will cause your app to crash. Now, um, you know, to help prevent you from spelling your your key incorrectly, what we can do is we can use um, Swift's key paths. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the name value to a different value this time, but I'm gonna use a key path. So as you can see, we just did the same exact thing. We're setting a value. This time it's gonna be kilo loco in a string and we're using a key path instead of using a string, which is much safer because using key path, you know, hash key path and then you in parentheses, you put whatever object. So in this case, user and then whatever property with in this case name and that essentially produces a string called name and the benefit to doing it this way is it will actually use autocomplete. If I, if I were to start doing this again, it will use autocomplete on anything that is um, in the Objective-C runtime. So if it's in the Objective-C runtime, it will automatically give me those values back so I know which ones are accessible using the key path. So it helps with um, preventing any, you know, misspellings of keys and causing crashes in your app if this value is not going to be, or if this key uh, string is not going to be dynamic. Now, there's another thing that we can also do, and we can actually set all the values, or however many values that we want, and we can set multiple at the same time. We don't have to do user.set value uh, you know, for the name and then user.set value for the age. What we can do is we can just use a dictionary and we can set the values that way. So let's go ahead and try that. All right, so as you can see, now what we did was we used the, a different function called set values for keys. And essentially what it allows you to do is it allows you to pass in a dictionary and you can set all the different keys with all the different values that you want directly from this dictionary. So instead of using like an initializer or something like that, you can use uh, this or you can, instead of accessing all the individual values you know, using, I don't know, autocomplete saying user.name is equal to, uh, you know, Mr. Loco and user.age is equal to 21, you can essentially set them in a dictionary. And this might be helpful if you're working with like, um, like uh, JSON or something like that. Now, before we move on to working with the array, which we could have done and set the value in here, the set value for keys, that would have been fine. But before we go on and talk about uh, working with the arrays in KVC, let's go ahead and talk about one of the biggest reasons why developers choose to use KVC. And uh, that is mainly because when you're working with things in Cocoa, essentially UI kit and even um, app kit, Sometimes you don't have access, you don't have direct access to a property. So let's say that we're going to set name to private and we actually don't have access to it. Well, in Swift, we're actually allowed to do extensions on objects, even if we haven't created them and we can modify or we can add additional code to that object. And what we want to do is we want to be able to get the value for name, even though we're not supposed to have access to it. So let's go ahead and see an example of that right now. <clears throat> All right. So now that uh, I have set the user uh, property name to private, now I can no longer print it right here. So essentially I'm going to get this compiling error and it's going to say, Hey, you don't have access to this. Stop trying to be illegal. 
So essentially what we need to do is we need to comment this out. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create an extension because let's just pretend like we don't have any access to this code inside of in, inside of here because maybe it's a UI kit object, right? And you didn't write UI kit, so you don't access it. Anyways, let's add an extension and access the name value and be able to set that name value using KVC. All right, so as you can see in this extension, we're going to pretend like we don't have any access to this code that name that the name property is private and that we are not supposed to be able to access the name. However, using KVC, once again, I'm still able to set the value for Mr. Loco, uh, set the value of name to Mr. Loco and then return the value of that name. And if I wanted to use one of these functions right here, this it would still be valid. So if I were to comment out this code right here and then we were to set the value to Kyle and we were to run it again, you'll actually see that Kyle gets set. Age, once again, doesn't get set, so it just uh, it just kind of stays at zero. But that's one of the biggest benefits to KVC is essentially it lets you access um, any Objective-C properties and set them through KVC even when you're not supposed to. So that's a little bit of hacking for you. The very last thing that we're gonna do is we're just simply going to access um, a property that has a value of an array and it's just we're just simply going I'm just just going to simply show you how you're going to do that. All right. So as you can see right here what we do what we have is uh we have a mutable we have a constant called mutable array and what we're doing is we're accessing the user object that we have right here and we're saying we're going to access this value as a mutable array. Unfortunately, you can't access these about any other values. You can't say like value for key. You know how we did value for key right here in our in our um, name value, our computed property right here. Well, you can't do you know string for key. Unfortunately, you can't do like double for key. But you can do mutable array for key. And the benefits of working with mutable array value for key is essentially is is that it gives you an array back that you can just play with. So even though it's a constant, it is of type mutable array. And what we can do is we can go ahead and add whatever we want to it. So as you can see, um, we since it is a mutable array, NS mutable array allows you to modify it even though it's a constant, which is kind of cool. And then uh, you can still add values and you can uh, you know, it's mutable, you modify it, whatever. <laughs> and then if you go ahead and print out the user.nicknames, you can see that nicknames are Big Sexy, Papi Chulo, and Mr. Still Yo Girl. So that's all we're gonna talk about for um, KVC, key value coding today. I hope that you found this valuable. Uh, like I said, we're gonna be using this in the future. So um, if you have any questions, make sure you leave them. You leave comments down below and if you want any topics covered just make sure you ask baby just just go ahead and ask for those topics to be covered i'm starting to put out more videos i just want to cover whatever you guys want covered anyways that's going to be all for today um very simple topic if you want more topics let me know make sure you check out kilaloco.com for that all access pass for my exclusive content and then if you like the shirt that i'm wearing right here you know, I got the link in the description, code passionately. You can pick one of those up. I will catch y'all later. Thank you once again, and keep coding passionately.